CQ Blasters field. I've come out here just before we start playing this afternoon. Mostly because, like, if you've seen my Instagram post, you would have seen I've got my hands on some of the new LDT slash Warrantress heavier milky gels, whatever they call it. But anyway, so what we're going to do is just a quick test. Like, Guido's done a video where you uh, he compares the sizes and how much force it takes to break, that sort of thing. So I will link to that video down below. I'm not going to bother with any of that because he's done that far better than I ever would have. So definitely go check that out before you have a look at this. All I'm gonna do with this is I'm basically going to use my J10 JMACR, which is completely standard, got absolutely nothing to it. I've got the zoom cam attached here, very expert and professionally like with Lucky Tape. What we're gonna do is I'm going to chrono this with standard milkies, just so we can, uh, gold packet milkies, just to make sure it's still sitting as it was. Then we'll do a firing test using the zoom cam and hopefully this camera will pick up some of it as well, though I'm not thinking it will, where we've got three targets, that red rusty barrel just there is 10 meters. The black barrel on the right, that's about 20 meters. And the greenish Caltex barrel down the far end, so that's about 30 meters away. Once we've done that, I'll try this without a hop up, then I'll chuck the hop up on, we'll try that. We'll see what the groupings and accuracy is like. Then I'll swap over to the other magazine, which has the heavier milkies. I'll do the exact same test with and without a hop up, and we'll see if there's any difference. I'm more curious to see if the accuracy and distance without a hop up is any different, because that's realistically where it should be a difference if the weight is heavier. But, without further ado, it's recording. I do like Chinese cameras use a blue light to show that it's recording unlike every other camera that uses a red light, but anyway. So, let's get into it. Go with the chrono first, just to confirm. You guys can't see this, but it's hilarious to me. I've got someone holding a hat over the microphone because of the wind. So, yep. Sitting about 250. Maybe a touch under, but that's probably just because I've used it a lot. So, let's try with the range. Yeah, so, 10 meters. About the same as the review, nothing special there. Uh, 20 meters, I hit the barrel maybe twice out of all those shots. Again, nothing unexpected. 30 meters, I'm probably not going to hit it all, but we'll see what we can do. I definitely saw one hit the barrel, can't hear it though, but pretty crap accuracy. Absolutely nothing special there. So, let's try the new boys. So, first up, chrono test. Oh, actually. Make my life easier there. Sounds like batteries die. <laughs> Alright, the battery is dying, but our chrono test we are looking still around 250 average, maybe a touch higher than the last slot. I'll quickly swap over the battery and then we'll do the range testing. Alright, so I've just put in a new battery, still 11 volts, so I did not mention that at the start it's actually running an 11 volt battery it's the only thing about it it's not standard still no hop up these are the heavier milkies so let's try 10 meters it's hard to tell but at 10 meters they do seem to have a fairly closer grouping but see how they go for 20 meters something else to note even though we are out in an open field it is kind of hard to control the wind so there is a bit of wind effect we'll see how that ties in I don't know about you, but that actually looks like it might be slightly better. Also, the breeze, while it wasn't strong there, it wasn't even impacting it at all, so there might be something to this. Let's try 30 metres. So I am hitting it. Um, about the same consistency of hitting, maybe a little bit better, but that also could just be because now I'm actually used to shooting at that range with the standard blaster. So, inconclusive on that one. I do think it is a little bit better, but not a huge amount. So what I'll do now is I'll chuck the hop up back on and we'll run through both styles of gels again and see if there's any further difference there. 
So just for the last quick test, I've just got the standard milkies back in. I've put my hopper back on just a heads up. This is a DK J10 hop up, so it's actually made for this blaster. It does work quite well. It is adjustable, but still not too bad. So once again, we'll go 10, 20, 30. We'll see if there's any difference. I have already set the hop up shooting off in a different direction, but we'll see how it goes. So then it is pushing a bit from the wind, but other than that, it's fairly straight. Funny. It's going around the barrel, which is about what I'd expect at that range. Wind again is pushing, but still not half bad. We'll go 30. I don't think we're going to hit anything. Yeah, we're hitting. But again, sort of dealing with the winds and whatnot, so that's not half bad. What I'll quickly do is I'll chuck the new ones in. Let's do a couple of test shots, make sure this hop-up doesn't need any different adjustment. And then yeah, we'll move on. Seems to be alright. Okay, so 10 meters, new heavier gels. About the same, can't see any real difference. Go to 20. Some of them are flying out at random directions. I think that's because they are bigger. It's hitting a hop up that's already set for a slightly smaller gel. So it could be that nipping it on the edges as it comes out of the barrel and sending it off in random directions. We'll try it for 30, still not too bad though. I dare say that's a bit more flat. That actually seems to go all right. So, that's a standard blaster. I was hoping to use a modified blaster that shows what it'd be like in there. Unfortunately, the one I plan to use uh, isn't available at the moment, so we'll just have to go with that for now, but that should be a good indicator to most of you. What I'll do is, after I get home, I'll edit it all up. That way you can see the zoom cam and I can have a look and then we'll go through and have a bit of a chat about them. I'm intrigued. What's the left? Whoa. Oh, you're right. Yeah, three lives. You got one behind the tree on the far left. Four. Reload. Going left, watch left. Can't believe I got him. Hey man, do you want this spot? I'm gonna make a run for the top four.
Watch out, Dan's trying to get us long range. Yo. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Oh, yep. I took a hit. Reloading. Down to my last. Hi Dan. Hey bud. Sex get a shit out of me. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that test footage and also that gameplay footage. Just a couple of notes on the heavier gels that I was uh, showing off in these this video. They are, they're not a game changer. Like they are not the be all end all. And they were definitely way overhyped when they first advertised. I mean, the idea is cool, but they were never gonna be as good as what they were said to be because they always do that, let's face facts. However, there is something to note in that there is a difference. So they are an improvement. They're not a huge improvement, but they are a improvement because I played that game and another one, which I didn't record, uh, that one with the ACR with the hop-up on, and I was nailing people from much further away. The balls were going a lot straighter. Yes, I had a hop-up, but I would actually almost speculate that the heavier weight works with the hop-up to make it better. 
uh, collectively. To me, that makes sense, but either way, I'm not a physicist, I'm not gonna argue that point. More importantly though, was the reports I got from other people who were playing. So I lent a bunch to Lieutenant Dan, who was using them in two of his blasters. Uh, one of them being an upgraded, like, 280 FPS M4 with a plastic barrel, and he noticed how much more accurate and how harder hitting they were. Uh, not only that, we also tried them in an upgraded M24 bolt action rifle that one of the guys that play out at CQ uh, brought out, and now he's put the V2 metal bolt upgrade and everything in it, and an alloy barrel, and it was significant because he has a proper scope mounted on it. Don't know why he did, cool. <laughs> and what we noticed was when you fired with those and his hop up, you could actually see them and you could hit semi-accurately at a distance. So it almost, with the right combination, this might actually allow for some kind of gel ball sniping to work. It might be enough of an improvement that that is possible. Because he did play some games as well using those these new gels and he noticed an increase in accuracy and he was actually getting people so there is something to this i'm not going to say they're the be all end all because they're not like ultimately they are different the only other indicator i had that they were worthwhile was a lot of people there was at least three or four who weren't part of our like our group who were just people who just came in and play and they tend to play whenever they can they were asking the owners of the field about getting the new gels because they were getting hit by them. So something else funny was that over distance, they still had a bit of force behind the impact. So it was actually easy to tell when you've been hit at a distance as opposed to just bouncing off your clothes. So to me, there was a noticeable difference. It wasn't a massive difference, but it was noticeable. And an improvement is still an improvement. Whether or not you notice the same thing, I think modified blasters are going to show that different results depending on how they're modified, what you're running, that sort of thing. But I think they would help, definitely. And I do think that the combination of the heavier, slightly heavier gel and the pop-ups do help. I think those two factors actually work quite well together to make the hop-up more capable to a point. Ultimately though, it is up to you and whether or not you decide it's worth the extra money because I have yet to see anyone who's selling these for the same price as the normal gels. From what I've heard is that even at cost, they cost more to buy for a supplier. So they're gonna be sold at a slightly higher price. I think I was gel one or two dollars more. Not a huge extra amount, but it's up to you whether or not you think it's worthwhile. Ultimately, like I always say, personal preference is king. I did notice a difference. I heard people on the field noticing a difference. So I believe there is something to them and I'm probably gonna start using them more and more as well and I might start stocking them as much as I do regulars just to see how things go over time, especially with certain blasters I use and modify and go through. So those are my thoughts on it though. As always, personal preference is king. If you do like them, let me know down below. If you don't like them or you have had a bad experience with them, again, let me down, know down below. Definitely check out that video by Lo Guido. He goes through, he measures sizes, force to break, all that sort of cool stuff, including different ways of growing them. I just grew them in cold tap water overnight, so plenty of time, cold tap water, nothing special, and they seem to still go really well. So to me, they don't require anything special to grow, which is nice. And yeah, I do want to give a quick shout out to sponsors of the channel, to Floz, who's actually been really generous with sponsoring, but you know, that's up to him. And also, funnily enough, Guido was nice enough to buy me a Pepsi Max. So don't worry, I drank a lot of those over the weekend, so that was good. <laughs> Either way, definitely check out his channel. If you do want to support the channel, links down below to PayPal and buy me a Pepsi Max or buy me a coffee is what the name of the site is. If you wish to do so, again though, it is 100% optional. It's entirely up to you, viewership is plenty for me. Keep this conversation going, let me know what you think, and I'll catch us next time. I wonder what we're gonna be doing. No idea. <laughs>